Hi there my crafty friends. Today I'm going to share with you this art journal page that I've recently completed. It has a bit of a masculine type of feel and it's got a really vintage look. I haven't done vintage in a while and I wanted to just um, give it a go again. So I'm going to show you in this video step by step how I achieved all these beautiful textures and how it all came together. I'm working in my regular art journal which is a secondhand book that I picked up from a charity shop and I'm going to use some printouts that I found of some vintage documents and some vintage writing. I'm also going to use this kit it's called Coffee and Lace by Nectus Creations and this one has got a bit of a masculine feel called The Wanderer also by Nectus Creations. Now these are prints that I have left over from some journals I've made so I thought it's a good way to use them up. I'm going to start by sticking down my collage pieces. I've got here some pages from a book that I'm going to stick down and I'm sticking them just with a glue stick and I'm putting them sideways so the text runs in a different direction which will add some interest. These are the pages you see with the vintage writing or the receipts or documents that are vintage. I just get those off Pinterest. I just search for printable vintage documents and then I just print out the ones that I like. Do be sure though to check that they're not copyrighted and that they're free to use. At this stage I'm not really thinking about where I'm sticking what. I'm sort of just sticking it down, overlapping some of it and just placing it. As, I, as I'm putting it down I'm seeing if I think the composition looks good and then I'll stick it down. There's no really right and wrong at this part. Just put it where you think it looks good or where it feels right. As you see, I'm just using a ruler to tear these down to size, not a scissors. They're going in the background. They're going to be covered with paint and gesso. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Just rip them up. You could also just do it freehand. I just used a ruler. I really like quick and easy. If you're asking yourself, why am I placing all this collage down if I'm just going to cover it up with paint and gesso? I would like to point you to a video that I've created a little while ago explaining exactly why I put down all this collaging. I will put a link to that video in the description below but basically what I do in that video is I create the same art journal page twice. On the one I put a lot of collaging in the background and the other one I don't and then you will be able to see the differences between the two and then I explain why I prefer the ones with the texture in the background. I'm going to secure these collage pieces with a little bit of Mod Podge. Just some of the corners are coming up because the glue stick didn't go all the way to the end. So I'm just using a paintbrush and just going just underneath the edges and then just quickly painting over them too, just to give them a little bit of a waterproofing so that I can add the additional layers of paint that are coming up. Thank you. 
This is just done on the computer. I've just used PowerPoint and I've typed the word vintage and then I've looked up the dictionary meaning of it and popped that in. And then I've just found a nice font and then I just print it out on the printer. And it's a great way to add some additional um, interest to your pages. I actually have done that for a junk journal page. It was one of the pages, but now I've just found a, a spare one. So I'm just gonna tear out the word and I've just stuck that down. And now my favorite, I'm adding my gesso to soften all the edges. Just using my finger and enjoying the process, I'm just going more concentrated on the areas of where the pages overlap and then going more lightly over the rest of the pages. And as you can see already, if you compare the left to the right, it's more toned down and I think it looks more cohesive. On the left, it's just very sharp lines and you can see where one ends and the other one begins which could look fine if that is the style you're looking for. But for me, I wanted more vintage, more worn out. So I'm adding my gesso. If you feel that the gesso is too thick in some areas, you can just use a baby wipe and just wipe that off while it's still wet. The baby wipes work a treat. I'm going to start with inks. This is a Distress Oxide Spray by Tim Holt. The color is called Tea Dye. And I am going to start with a smushing technique, which then does not work because the book is not flat. So I'm just going to smear it around with the block but it doesn't have the effect that I normally get with my smushing that I do so I'm just going to spray a lot of water and just let the ink run and I'm going to do this in layers and dry in between each layer so I'm building the color that way so forget the acrylic block I'm just now putting drops of the ink directly onto the page putting a lot of water moving it around and then drying it if you don't have inks, that is fine. You can use acrylic paint, you can use watercolors, you can use gelato crowns, you can use any kind of color medium that you have. It does not have to be inks. I just like using the inks because I have all the vintagey colors, the vintagey tones. This one is called um, brushed corduroy, which I like the looks it gives, but please do use what you have. You don't have to go and spend a fortune on inks or any kind of medium. Use what you have in your craft room. I think the trick with this technique is lots of water. I have a small spray bottle that I keep with just plain water in that I spray. I also have a paintbrush that I use. I pick up quite a lot of water with it and then also help to move the paint or the ink around. So um, it really is about water and giving it that flowy medium so that it can move around. My next layer is um, something called Grit Paste, also a Tim Holtz product. It's like a texture paste, but it's more gritty. Maybe that's why it's called Grit Paste. Um, it's got a different kind of a texture. It's not a smooth texture, which I really like. And especially for doing vintage themed um, projects, it works really, really well. And I love the way it absorbs the color or how the color goes into it um, and makes it look really rusty and worn. So I'm just using a small palette knife and just scraping it just here and there. Some areas thicker, some thinner. It doesn't have to be perfect. Wherever you think you'd, you want it to be. There's no right and wrong. Just slap it on. At this point, can I just quickly point out what I was talking about earlier? I've just highlighted four areas where you can see some of the underlying collage shining, shining through. Yes, it's not all shining through. Most of it is covered, but the bits that are shining through make it look really interesting. 
I'm now going to add another ink. This I've only got in a pad, so I just press the pad onto the acrylic block and then I add some water and it becomes like a watercolor. This is called Vintage Photo and it's a Distress Ink by Tim Holtz. I'm just using a paintbrush with lots of water and concentrating adding this color over the areas where I put the grit paste just so that it sort of has a lack of darker edges um, and I'm not really um, planning where it's going as I just work through the page I just add it wherever I think it is needed. Once that's all dry, I'm going to work on my elements that are going to go on the top as my focal point. So I'm really liking these two tags that I'm going to cut out. I love that it's got a bit of a turquoise which brings a bit of the color through and I just like them together, one overlapping. And I also like this which is like a Da Vinci kind of flying machine that um, I'm going to just cut out and see where it's going to go. Composition doesn't always work the first time, you have to move things around and as much as I like that flying machine, I'm finding the colour is too close to my background so it's just getting lost. So um, at this point I'm realising that I'm probably not going to use it. I'm trying some different ways to make it pop, like putting different backgrounds but unfortunately it wasn't meant for this project. So to try and make the background a bit more bold, I'm going to add some texture paste through this stencil. This stencil is just a no-name no brand that I bought off eBay quite a few years ago. I'm sorry, I don't have the details of it. If I ever do find it, I will post those because I know a lot of people ask about the stencil. So I'm just adding it a little bit on the right and then some on the left just to balance it out. And it's meant to go just underneath my focal points. Quick tip, when you're using texture paste with your stencils, do clean them with a baby wipe straight after you've used them because sometimes when the texture paste dries, it then doesn't come off and your stencils can be ruined. Before I do any more, I'm going to dry it and whoopsie, I've just dropped the heating tool on top of the texture paste and although you can't see it in the video it smudged it a lot so I'm going to remove as much as I can and start that part again. Again like I've said before the joys of art journaling just wipe it off start again or just go over it. For my colour I'm going to add some turquoise, I'm using my colour burst powders, I'm just going to add a very small dusting of them and then spray the water 
and look at that explosion of color absolutely love it as i add water with the paintbrush you can see how it runs down in between the a stencil in the between the stencil grooves and i think it makes a really really beautiful gorgeous effect Once it's dry, I'm going to add one of my favorite um, additions, which is black splatter. I'm just using black acrylic paint for this. I water it down quite a bit, and then I just use my paintbrush and tap the paintbrush onto my hand and just let it splatter everywhere. Now let's try those focal points again. I think that looks much better. It makes them stand out more. And even though you can't see a lot of the turquoise, the bit that's peeping through the background, I think looks really nice. And I'm quite happy with that. Again, just moving around, just being sure that's what I want. And um, just working on the composition. To zhuzh it up a bit, I'm going to add some hessian string onto my tags. I'm going to tie the one in a really big bow and the other one I'm just going to leave with just two strands and just something a little different and to make it a bit more pop off the page. I want to use the words what the wanderer as the sort of the title of the page I'm just going to find a background for the wording and then a few other elements just to finish off the decoration Once I'm happy with all the elements and where they're placed, I'm going to secure everything down with the hot glue. Thank you so much for joining me while I've been making this art journal page. I do hope you enjoyed this video. I want to say a really big thank you also for all your lovely comments. I read every single one of them and I will reply to them all too. I may not get to them sort of the same day or the day after, but I will get to all the comments and reply. Thank you. I really, really appreciate them. I would love it if you subscribed to my channel and also hit the little notification bell so you're notified every time I upload my new videos. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you again soon. Bye.